Thank you, choir, for that beautiful number. And thank you, Cheryl, for your beautiful prayer. And thank you, Kathy, for your testimony, which will fit right into my talk in just a second. So I'm looking forward to your helping me with that. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I stand before you very humbled by the many miracles and tender mercies from our Heavenly Father that have allowed me to be here with you today. I am a convert to the church. I was baptized in 1999 while a single mother of three children in Scottsdale, Arizona. Two of my children were actually baptized before me, but that's a story for another time and another place. Um, this coming August, I will be married to, for 15 years to the love of my life, my husband, Ron, who was instrumental in introducing me to the gospel and the church. I refer to him as my BNR. This designates him as my born and raised in the church. I'm hoping that some of you can assist me this morning with a little exercise that I think will help me feel a little more comfortable today as I stand before you. Are you ready? Well, those of you in the audience today who are baptized converts in the church, do me the honor of standing up so I can see you. Let me see your faces. Thank you. You can sit down. Since my conversion to the church, I've found that any burden that I have to carry in adversity or life challenges seems to be made lighter by the gospel of Jesus Christ in my life. The ability I have been given to access the atonement of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost that lifts and comforts me and the blessings that enable me to expand my capacity to learn and grow and become more are truly amazing gifts. I hope that those of you who stood with me today can confirm my claim that living with the gospel in your life literally lifts the weights of the world in a tangible way and that lift enables us to see our challenges from a more positive and eternal perspective. I'd like to share some slides with you today. It was not originally in my plans, but I was inspired by Sister Warnes and Brother Wright and Brother Hunsinger. Mine are not as artistic and creative, but I think they will help to illustrate my points more effectively. This is my husband, Ron. Our grandchildren tell their friends that their grandpa is the real Santa. He brings so much fun in creating great experiences and memories for our family and friends. These are our tomato plants. I need to preface that my husband and I are not gardeners. Originally, the tomato plants were a gift from a neighbor, so we felt compelled to clear a spot and to plant them in our backyard. They sat in their spots for weeks. They did not grow or produce flowers. They stayed small and looked destined to wither away and die. Then my husband was wise enough to seek the advice of an elderly man that we know who grows beautiful tomatoes every season. Ron learned that in order for our tomato plants to have their best chance to reach their potential, we needed to make them work for their water. We have been letting the sprinklers water them and water them plenty but my husband was coached to hoe irrigation trenches around them and to only water them occasionally so that the roots of the tomatoes had to reach for their water. This needs to be done in order for them to help grow stronger, taller, and become capable of holding the fruit that they would eventually bring forth. So my husband began carefully covering the plants in the evening so that their leaves and the ground around them remained dry when the sprinklers ran. Then he carefully uncovers them at dawn every morning. We were schooled to put wire tomato cages around each plant. We learned that without the support, the vine-like stems of the tomato plants fall to the ground under the weight of the developing fruit. And the tomatoes forming along the ground are more likely to encounter rot or disease. And if the plants aren't supported, the stems can also break as the tomatoes begin to grow and get heavy. Did you know that tomato cages come in several designs, shapes, and colors? You may be asking yourself about now, why am I standing here espousing tips on growing tomatoes? It is because I realize that what I learned and observed about our tomato plants made me think of you 
the students at LDSPC. I began my work in February of this year. In my first week, I found out that one of the best perks in my new adventure was being able to come to devotional here in this beautiful assembly hall every week. I must say that I never anticipated that I would be a speaker here. The fact that I've sat in your seats and have heard powerful, life-altering messages exposes the fact that, frankly, I may not be equipped to give you a meaningful message today. As you may know, speakers are not given topics. Rather, they are asked to let the Spirit guide. So I have prayed for guidance and trust that your prayers of support will allow you to hear the most appropriate message for yourself today. As I was searching for spiritual guidance to help me with the topic, I heard a quote from the Mormon Channel by Truman G. Matson, and it, from his book, Eternal Man, and it goes like this. To be or not to be, that is not the question. What is the question? The question is not of one of being, but of becoming. To become more or not to become more. This is the question faced by each intelligence in our universe. So each of you, all of us, are faced with a decision daily to become more or not to become more. As a student in this blessed institution, you have the advantage to become more, and your free agency allows you to personally decide if becoming more will be part of the vision you have for yourself. I hope that you can grasp the magnitude of what is happening in the world around you and what you are being prepared to contribute to the world around you. <laughs> By choosing to attend LDSBC, you have chosen to be part of creating your own best personal experience. By engaging in activities, behaviors, and routines that will lead you back to the presence of our Heavenly Father and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Since coming here, I've been amazed at the many faculty and staff who serve here and are incredibly willing to sacrifice their personal objectives, their careers, their earning potential to be a part of building you, the students here at LDSBC, who will graduate not only with skills to contribute to a workplace, but more importantly, as beacons of great personal and moral character. This college, with its sacred funds, dedicated faculty and staff, library system, free tutors, peer and missionary mentors, clubs, organizations, help desk, jobs, advisors, disability accommodations, beautiful artwork, impeccably maintained facility, cushy chairs at the end of the hallways for afternoon naps, great technology, devotionals, the BC Cafe, and oh, let us not forget the high quality BYU creamery chocolate milk. All of this and more is your tomato cage. The scaffolding that is available to hold you up and to help mold you as you explore what you are to become and support you as you produce the fruits of your personal efforts to help you as you diligently choose to become more. As we have learned from the words of President Eyring during his inaugural address for President Richards in 2009, as a student and future graduate of LDSBC, your value in the marketplace will be, quote, ever more rare, unquote, as you develop within yourselves, quote, an inner moral compass, unquote. It will be that inner moral compass growing and stretching as your roots underneath the, your, your education and skill development, which will separate you from your peers who graduate from other colleges and universities outside the CES system. Every day as I enter my office, Oop, I'm a little behind on my slides. Every day as I enter my office, I see this quote at the end of the hallway from Neil A. Maxwell. I stop to read it, to ingest it, and to help it inspire my actions for the day. Think of yourselves not for who you are, but for who you have the potential to become. In my previous career, we were encouraged to add a quote at the end of our email footer that inspired us, and this is the one I used. Treat people as if they were what they ought to be, and you will help them to become what they are capable of being. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. You are capable of becoming more than what you can even imagine for yourselves at this time in your young lives. The key is, are you willing to diligently do the work required of you? 
Do you have faith that the Lord can expand your individual capacity as you choose to put him first, to serve first, to keep the Sabbath day holy first, to attend devotional first, even as you choose to do your homework first? Yes, even before you go out and play Pokemon Go. I invite you to act with intention each day as you plan and prepare, as you actively seek and take advantage of all the resources available to you within this college. I invite you to act, to prepare in advance for classes, to live what you are learning, to follow through with your commitments, to pray, to study, to be obedient, so that the Holy Ghost can guide and direct you daily. This path, should you decide to take it, gives you such the advantage. In DNC 88, verse 78, it reads, Teach, and I think we can substitute learn here as well, Learn ye diligently, and my grace shall attend you, that you shall be instructed more perfectly in theory, in principle, in doctrine, in the law of the gospel, in all things that pertain unto the kingdom of God that are expedient for you to understand. Back in January, David A. Bednar of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles gave the following message in a BYU-Idaho devotional, and his words can be applied to us just as if he was standing here today. Quote, Repetition is a vehicle through which the Holy Ghost can enlighten our minds, influence our hearts, and enlarge our understanding. I witnessed firsthand the watch care exercised by leaders of this church over the widow's might. That, allow, that makes it possible for you to be a student or an employee at this university. Those experiences have changed me. Using the language of the Old Testament prophet, prophet Haggai, I invite you to carefully and prayerfully consider your ways. I promise the Holy Ghost will help you to see yourself as you really are and to identify both the things you presently are doing well and the course corrections you need to make in your life." Unquote. Learning by the Spirit helps the Holy Ghost fuel your curiosity and inquiry. It is so much easier if we are striving to live daily in such a way that we will always have His Spirit to be with us. It's not the easier plan. Just like the roots of the tomato plant, reaching for the water that has not been poured directly on it. Even though it must work harder, the tomato plant develops faster and produces more desirable fruit when it must stretch itself to access water and use its scaffolding of its tomato cage to help lift it. Each of you is part of what is coming, the building of Zion in your families, your workplaces, your communities, the church, and quite possibly part of the future of taking education wherever the church is organized worldwide. You are the beacon and light in an ever-darkening world. You are the current day army of Helaman. As written in Psalms 24, verse three through six, who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn, sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation that seek him. During the time we have here together at LDSBC, when we collide with those moments in our lives where we have a choice to become more or not to become more, I ask you to consider personally what you will do with those opportunities. Like many of you, I know that God has a hand and a purpose in placing me here at LDSBC at this time. You belong here, we belong here, and we have what it takes to be successful here. Elder Kim B. Clark, Commissioner of the Church Education System, shared a message back in May with those who labor in the CES umbrella. He said, quote, the Lord Jesus Christ has a great work for us to do with this rising generation, unquote. That is you, the rising generation. Elder Clark also said, and I am summarizing here, that, quote, whatever level of spirituality, faith, strength, obedience, hope, charity, professional skill, and ability, that we may have attained to this point will not be sufficient for the work that lies ahead." Unquote. Could that be a scary thought? Absolutely. However, we were also reassured in the same address 
that, quote, we will receive the revelation we need and we will do the work with the pure love of Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost. The rising generation will learn deeply. They will rise up, unquote. Let me end with a scripture which is currently written on the window of my office from Galatians 6, verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I am so blessed to be a part of your journey, and I pray and encourage you to seek out all the resources available to lift and support you here at LDSBC as you choose to become more. And I share these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.